Hey guys, Spartan Jess here. And you know, I figured it was about time that we had an updated version of the CB88 repair video. I've kind of wanted to do this video for a while for a couple of reasons. I wanted to implement a version of this video with a more top-down perspective. And also because people keep asking me if I could go ahead and repair some of their CB88s, which honestly, I'm not personally interested in doing so. My mindset and philosophy for these kind of videos is to teach people how to do these things themselves. And also I'd barely have the time to do that. However, somebody in the Halo Airsoft community has agreed to help me with a collaborative effort into this video and the person that knows CB88s like it's the back of their hand. And that person would be Parzival. He's decided to help me out here today, and he's also more than willing to help you guys repair your CB88 if you don't want to do it yourself. So without further ado, let me pass all this on to Parzival himself. Hi there, Parzival here. I hope this video helps you in the disassembly or repair of the Chrono Blaster. If you're looking for more information or need service help, feel free to reach me on Discord. My username is Parzival, hashtag 8239. I don't know it all, but I'll do my best. I'll gladly assist in text chat or video chat if you're comfortable. Good luck and enjoy the video. Here we have the Snow Wolf Chrono Blaster or CB88. Starting off, I'll press the button on the in-game ejection port for powering the electronics, our counter, counter side lights, and hand grip lights. On the side of the rifle is a toggle switch for the front light powered by one AAA battery. Press and hold the ejection port button to turn off the electronics. You can let go after the counter has grayed out. With the buttstock rubber cover removed, disconnect your 9 volt battery. For removing the handguard, remove two bolts at the trigger. A number 2 Phillips screwdriver worked fine for these. Eject your magazine. At the barrel end of the rifle, remove the flashlight head and one AAA battery if it's still in there, exposing one bolt. Unscrew the mag release button, exposing a spring. With all handguard bolts and accessories removed, slide the grip off the body. This can be easier with the counter portion of the rifle removed first. As you pass the magwell with the handguard, be sure to press the side LED circles into the magwell to prevent pulling the wires from the LEDs. Removing the counter rail. Remove two bolts at the barrel end of the rifle, with the bolts removed, slowly slide the counter attachment toward the barrel and upward. This will expose the wiring going into the counter electronics. Carefully remove the three-wire JST connector. You may need to hold the counter electronic board down. It is only held in with pressure and hot glue. Removing the safety block. The safety block can go in or out either way. The way the safety engages depends on how the block and the block latch are put into the rifle. To remove, simply press the safety block out of the rifle. Afterward, carefully pry the metal latch out of the slot it is held in. Removing the hand grip. Remove the single bolt behind the trigger, easy to reach with Phillips screwdriver through the hole in the bottom of the grip. With the buttstock rubber cover removed, peering in from behind you will see four bolts. You only need to worry about the two where the 9 volt battery sits. The two outer bolts just remove the buttstock portion that is covered by the rubber sleeve and does nothing when tearing down the rifle. With the bolts removed, you can slide the hand grip downward and toward the rear of the rifle. As you gain some distance, your trigger and spring can be removed from the rifle. Be cautious of the fused motor battery connection as you remove the grip. Separating the main body shell. Remove the handguard side LED cover on the opposite side of the mag ejection button. Remove the front and lower clamp bolts, two on each side, keeping in mind which clamp went where. With a smaller Phillips screwdriver, remove nine screws from the body. There are three in the front, three in the middle of the front, three in the rear. These are screwed into plastic and in my opinion are the weakest link of the teardown, second being the side LEDs. Be careful when putting this back together or you will strip the screw holes. I prefer to leave the same screws in the same holes and start the threads by applying pressure with the screwdriver downward and rotate my screwdriver as if removing the screws until I feel the screw click into its original threads, then slowly tighten. With clamps and screws removed, with a card or a plastic pry bar, carefully pry around the body edge, slowly separating the metal pins that the shells are pressed into. 
Starting at the front of the rifle, you see your barrel, your AAA flashlight, the sensors attached to the barrel for the counter, the flashlight switch, the mag present toggle switch, the gearbox, mag, hop-up metal frame, and finally the main board. The main board is held in by four screws and the cables for all electronics. This board is extremely proprietary and for an unknown time can be purchased in a spare electronics kit from Evic. Main board removal. Remove all six JST connectors from the main board. Remove both motor leads, paying attention to which lead went where for later. Remove the four screws and gently remove the main board. Offset removal and installation. With a soldering iron set to 370 Celsius, you carefully heat up the pins to the old MOF set and traces to the board, pulling the MOF set with a set of pliers as it will get hot. Eventually, you will have gained enough ground to pull one side of the MOSFET out, then the other. After removing the damaged MOSFET, attach your heat sink to your new MOSFET. There are professional ways of doing this. I went with a quick nut and bolt for video's sake. Heat your solder pads for the MOSFET pins and gently insert the new MOSFET. After in place, warm your MOSFET pins individually and apply solder to the pins where they meet the board. I did this at an angle and didn't realize I was building solder at the base of the MOSFET and not the board. Prevent this by applying solder with the board flat and your MOSFET end with the heat sink facing the ceiling. Installation and Trial After MOSFET modification, install the main board, six JST connectors for electronics, counter not needed, connect both motor connections, plug in a 9 volt and applicable battery for the rifle. Power up the electronics, then hold the toggle switch for the mag present with one hand and press the gearbox trigger with the other. If testing is successful, remove the batteries and begin to button up the cabling for the rifle on the inside of the shell. Carefully lower the other half of the body onto the other, closing the casket. Make sure no wires are being crimped between the body halves before pressing the shells together, closing the gap. Make sure your side LED that you had to pull through and the counter wires are through their appropriate slots. After your shell is together, you can tighten your screws around the body. Keep in mind this is metal going into plastic. Do not over tighten. You can render a screw hole useless by stripping out the threads. Just snug is enough. With the screws snugged up, you can reattach the two clamps to the body with two screws each. The clamp with one hole goes on the bottom of the body. The clamp with two holes go on the front of the body. Now, starting with the hand grip of the rifle, insert your trigger spring and trigger through the front of the hand grip. Next, begin to slide or press the grip onto the rifle body, but allow a gap in the back. With that gap, pull or push your 9 volt battery connector through the slot in the back. This can be easier with the buttstock plate removed, just unscrew the two screws onto the buttstock if you are facing the 9 volt. Next, insert the two screws removed inside of the 9 volt battery port as well as a single screw just behind the trigger to the hold the hand grip in place. With the hand grip in place, insert your safety block and spring. This can be really any way you want. You can reverse the block or the spring to get your desired position for safe or fire modes. Next up is the counter rail. Bring your counter attachment close and reconnect the three prong JST connector. Afterward, gently tuck up the wires either into the body or behind the counter, then snug up the counter to the body, lining up the catch on top of the body. When in place, insert the two screws at the barrel end of the rifle. Onto the last bit. Grab your handguard and grab the clear LED cover you had to remove from one of your side LEDs. Gently push the LED cover over the LED. Careful not to bend your pins or disconnect your wire. Snow Wolf made these prone to disconnecting. With both LED covers on, bring the handguard close and push your LEDs into their respective slots and gently push your handguard onto your rifle. As you bring the guard down, tuck the wires for those LEDs back into the body to avoid pinching. When your handguard is on, go ahead and attach your mag latch with the spring, latch itself, and button with the screw. After your mag latch is connected, before screwing in the handguard, test fit a mag. If it doesn't hold or is too tight, shift your handguard with pressure one way or the other. 
until your mag seats and releases efficiently. When finished, insert your two screws at the trigger and single screw from the barrel end. Put your AAA battery into the flashlight and attach your flashlight head. And that's it. Go ahead and give it a few test shots. I hope this video helps and if you have any questions, reach out to the Halo Airsoft community, whether on our Facebook or Discord. Plenty of help to go around. Thanks and catch you guys later. So we hope you guys enjoyed this collaborative effort between Parzival and I showing you how to repair your own CB88. If you're interested to know what kind of materials that you need to repair it yourself, well don't be too shy to check the description of the video below. And also don't forget, if you don't want to repair the CB88 yourself and you don't have the confidence to do that, Parzival is more than willing to personally help you out. This was a great video to work together on. I'm keen to do more content like this with other members in the Halo Airsoft community. So, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget, this is truly Combat Evolved.